Although they divide opinion, referees are an important part of the game of football, and the reality is that without referees, there would be no football. Today I'm speaking with three referees from different states, Delfina Domofsky from ACT, John Opotsis from New South Wales, and Robbie Anderson from South Australia. They're going to talk to me about their experiences being a referee, why they become a referee, why they love being a referee, as well as some of the darker sides of the game when you are a referee. I know this is a bit of a longer video than what you're probably used to seeing from me, but I hope it will be worth the watch. We will start things off with an easy question. How did you first get into refereeing? Just what was it that made you first want to pick up a whistle? I was a really crap player <laughs> and uh, I was in year 12 and I decided that I wanted to still be involved in football. Um, I was playing and I was working a part-time job and um, like a lot of young people, uh, refereeing offered pocket money and to do football. So it was a win-win. So I, that's how I became a ref. I remember it was back in 2000 and probably towards the end of 2013 and I was actually at a Sydney FC game when the thought struck me that I wasn't very satisfied just being a spectator, that I wanted to be involved in the game a little bit more somehow. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't think I necessarily had the talent to play. Um, so you know, the next, best, the next best thing for me was to get involved in refereeing. I did a little bit of research, reached out to my local branch repeatedly. <laughs> um, and yeah, then uh, back in 2014, I sat the level four course, completed it, and here we are, seven, seven seasons on. Um, so I'm a part of the Red Army, uh, Adelaide United supporter group. And a mate of mine from there is a referee as well. Um, and basically, prior to that, I used to umpire for Aussie Rules and fell out of love with it when they changed the game too much. And so, yeah, decided to throw my hat into the ring and uh, very quickly learned how much I absolutely loved it. And what is the highest level you have officiated in? Um, I have done an international friendly uh, between Canada and Australia, which was pretty cool here in Canberra a couple of years back. I'm a regular on the Westfield W League, so I'm an assistant referee. I have been for the past eight years and I've done over 50 matches. Um, and in the middle, uh, I refereed our local um, capital football MPL one level. The level that I've officiated at is M. PL3 level, I think it was 18s. Um, yes, that that was um, that's that's definitely the highest level. But I do I do Premier League um, in the in the district as well. The moment I'm getting to a stage of regular reserves for State League One, um, State League Two, uh, been lucky enough to be assistant referee for a few of the FFA Cup games in the, the junior round. So um, those have probably been my highlights and uh, officiating on a, a final as well, which was uh, fantastic. Now going back to the past a little bit, do you remember the first match you refereed in? And how do you think you went in that match? Can you tell us a little bit about the story? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh it was interesting. It was um, back home. So I'm from Wollongong. Uh, it was at Lakelands Oval. And uh, I think it was at Dapto uh, Under 18s Girls from memory. Um, I was in the middle. I think it was like two weeks after I got my ref ticket. So I was a similar age to a lot of the girls and I went to school with them. Um, so that made it fun. Um, it was a pretty savage match from memory. But I remember the assessor saying to me, oh, you're a natural. So we'll take with that what we will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can remember that game that was that was atrocious that was um yeah um it, it was 
It was a game, I think, that was a rather typical experience for a new level four referee, I think. Um, you came you came out of that game with a very different understanding because um, at the time the the level four course was run over a series of of nights um, uh, consecutive consecutive weeks um, and yeah by that stage you had just been you know given all this information which which was tailored to so that you weren't necessarily overwhelmed but you still could not be prepared for stepping out onto the park so yeah that you came, came out came off that park with quite a quite a lot to learn uh yeah i do uh four years ago under 18s uh i would have been absolutely packing it back then <laughs> but there was also a part of me that when I stepped onto that field, I realized this is where I'm meant to be. Uh, I actually use this as my stress relief, surprisingly enough. Uh, so being able to be still connected to the part of the game, being able to give back to the game as well, uh, it's probably one of the, the biggest highlights. So I think the way they do it is quite good. You start off doing assistant referee roles, uh, getting a feel for the actual pace of the, the higher leagues. And then start gradually building your your skills and your development through training and uh, mentorship. Not only that, but also assessing. Uh, being assessed on the on your games really gives you that sort of benefit of knowing you've got a team to back you uh, in in your decisions that you make. The people, and when I say the people, I mean my colleagues. Um, I've made lifelong friends. Um, my partner, he's also a referee. Um, there, it's a really inclusive network of people from all works, walks of life. Like I learn something from my colleagues every day. So you have like young kids all the way up to like, you know, grandparents that are involved with refereeing and, um, it's a really nice spread and a really inclusive community who really support each other. And, um, I'm very thankful to be part of it. Best thing about being a referee is being involved in the game that I love. I really am passionate about football, contrary to popular belief. I don't go out onto the park to ruin a game. I, I want to participate in the game and I want to actively participate in the game. Football, to be, to be properly enjoyed, it's really not a spectator sport, right? And, and I, think that, I think you'll hear every active support say that. It, it is not a spectator sport. You have to be active and you've got to be involved in it. Um, so just being involved in the game is the best, the best thing about being a referee. Um, you also get a different view. You're not, you're not in the grandstands. You're not hundreds of metres away. You are right there in the middle of the action. You are participating in it. I get to be a part of the game I love. You know, this is not just a a part-time passion for me this is a game i live eat sleep and breathe you know i'll get up at four o'clock in the morning to watch a, a game halfway across the world uh to being there behind the the goals of the red army drumming you know 90 minutes solid to you know doing six to seven games a weekend and absolutely being spent on monday but not being happy so for me, it's, as I said, an ability to give back to the sport, especially with anything from under 12s to under 17s. I really use that as an opportunity to help develop the players of tomorrow, um, as well as also being able to provide them an unbiased point of view as to things they can improve on as a player, um, all the way through to you know building that respect between the player and the, and the referee as well. So I, I find that really crucial. So in your opinion, during a match, what do you think some of the hardest calls to get correctly are? Ooh, um, that's a good one. 
as an AR, tight off sides, 100%. Um, when you're like on the borderline and you leave it down and you, you watch it later and you're like, oh, God, that was not great um, from an assistant referee's perspective. Um, as a referee in the middle, um, I'd have to say calls that you know are going to be divisive or potentially impact a game. So um, dog so uh, spring to mind. Um, I mean, um, unless it's cut and dry and the player can't argue with you, if there's a bit of grain in it, it always causes flashpoints. And I think as well, um, you know, here in the ACT, we have uh, temporary dismissals. Um, so that's obviously quite divisive for some people because you're essentially taking them down to, you know, 10 players um, because someone couldn't control themselves with dissent. Um, and that's sometimes a challenge to weigh up whether or not um, it's worthy of giving a bin for dissent or whether you try and manage it. So I find that's really challenging at the moment as well. I don't I don't think there are any calls to, that, are, that are hard to make. It's it's. What did you see? And there, in, in that split second, there might be a moment of doubt. There might be a seed of doubt, but you you spend quite a lot of time training and reading the laws of the game and being up to speed with the laws of the game and interpretations and all that sort of stuff that you know very quickly how to pull that back and rein it in and have a conversation with your assistant referee or your referee and come to the right decision. Like there, there are ways and means of getting through those tough decisions, be that a penalty, be it an offside decision, be it, you know, be it a foul. And, you know, you know that there was a foul, you know that there are two cautions or there are two cards that need to be shown. There, there, are, there are ways that you're taught to, to manage those situations, to slow things down so that you gather all the information that you need to then correctly apply the laws of the game? For me, I, I think the, the biggest ones are the, the game changing minutes or the, the, the key match decisions. Uh, you know, the penalty any day, you're always going to have a 50-50 chance of people calling it absolutely baloney um, or being absolutely spot on. So, you know, I think the hardest part is being a referee is no matter how good a call you make, you will still be wrong in someone's eyes. So, I think at the end of the day, you've got to be absolutely sound in your judgment. I've never met a decision or a referee where a player has changed your mind. So that's probably one of the big ones. Um, for me, though, is it's that moment where you're a minute out from the end of the game and that decision that is true and valid can absolutely make or break a, a team's win or loss. So for me, though, that's, that's what is probably the biggest part of it is, you know, as a referee, it's not about you. It's about the game. It's about making sure that the flow of the game's there um, and, you know, making those tough calls when you have to. So, yeah, it's, it's part and parcel. Now on to something that probably doesn't shock you as a referee but we have seen officials leaving the games in absolute droves in this country lately, mostly due to abuse. So, just how bad can the abuse get? I know that uh, this season here in Canberra, we've had some of the worst abuse incidents that we've had in a very long time, uh, both physical and verbal, towards referees. Um, helping colleagues and witnessing colleagues... Um, being feeling unsafe to go to a game or feeling unsafe to walk out their front door because they're worried because in a place like Canberra everyone knows everyone um so it's quite challenging to see that happening for people who just want to participate in the game that they love in the capacity that they want to um I personally am very vocal about it because I think there is no place for that level of disrespect and abuse regardless of what your role is regardless of whether or not you make an error or you do something that someone doesn't agree with. Um, I always come back to the fact that, you know, someone wouldn't come to your day job and sit at your desk and scream at you for, for seven hours for doing your job, yet we tolerate it and accept it in a sports workplace. Um, and I think a lot is to be said around um, the way we are managing and dealing with it. Um, I'm a firm believer in a community approach because slogans and campaigns run out of member federations don't really gain 
that much traction unless there is community buy-in by all football stakeholders. Like I think the mentality of us versus them is very outdated. Um, I think it should be uh, this is an us inclusive issue that needs to be dealt with inclusively. So it's clubs having their voices heard as to what their concerns are. It's referees having their voices heard as to what their concerns are. And it's coming to common ground. And I think a lot of the campaigning that I've been doing is about changing the perception of referees publicly, because a lot of people have this idea that, you know, you pull on a uniform and you go out there and you're a nerdy little shit that's bad at football and you've taken up a whistle for an ego trip, which is not correct at all. Uh, They don't see all the additional stuff that goes in behind the scenes to making good referees. And, um, you know, they don't see the training, they don't see the exams, they don't see the watching of dozens of games. Not that that's a bad thing. I love watching lots of football, but um, watching lots of games, they don't see how much referees beat themselves up when they make an error as well. Um, we're not out there going, woohoo, I totally sent that guy off and he didn't deserve it. So there are, there are a lot of elements behind it. And I think conversations and frank, open, honest conversations are the way to start fixing this because uh, it's, it'll be detrimental for the game if we keep losing referees at the rate we're losing them because each referee we lose, it takes three years to qualify a referee to a standard to replace what we've already lost to referee in senior competitions. So that's a big gap to be trying to fill every year. It can be quite offensive. It can be quite confronting for a junior referee and you know the it's it's true when it's said you won't be the first and you won't be the last but I and I remember coming through you know and being told you've you've got to you've just got to stick with it you know the, the the first four seasons that I was that I was refereeing I remember and just about the same point in the season, just just towards the end of the regular season, just before finals, I would always have this thing where I was just like, look, I'm, I don't think it's for me. I'm going to let it go. This season has been really bad. I don't, I just don't think that, you know, just because I enjoy it, it doesn't, doesn't mean that I'm any good at it, you know. And I had many mentors. I had, you know, friends, fellow referees turn around and say, no, 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 <laughs> don't be stupid. You, you love the game. You enjoy refereeing. You've just got to stick with it. Yes, you've had a bad game. Yes, you might have had consecutive bad games, but you've got to stick with it and you've got to develop a thick skin. You're not the first, you won't be the last. And now as an instructor and as an assessor who's also now bringing junior referees through the ranks, and when I say junior referees, I don't just mean junior in terms of age. I mean people who are stepping out into the park for the first time in a refereeing capacity. That just doesn't sit right. It doesn't sit right saying you're not going to be the first and you won't definitely be the last. Like, even though it's true, we've all been there, we're all going to be there and we're all going to go through it. Um, You know, you you see it now, like in the Premier League, a decision goes against a team. The fans in the grandstands are not saying nice things about the referee. (laughs) You know, it it can be quite confronting. and it begs the question, would you rather thousands of people yelling at you where you can kind of drown, out, drown it out, or would you rather a handful of people where you can hear every single word that's being said? You know, the, the only thing that we can do is to coach and mentor and train our, our referees to focus on the game in front of them because anything outside the white lines is really out of the control. Um, but it, it can be confronting. It can be a lot at times, even, even for the most steely of referees. Personally, I've only experienced it a handful of times. Um, I think the worst case I've ever seen is a centre referee making the right call, uh, second yellow red card um, in the middle of the pitch and watching the player's brother jump over the fence to try and go for the, the referee. Um, luckily, the, the, the team officials were right on it and were able to escort the, the party off. I think for me... The hardest groups are the the parents, 
Uh, I think they're probably, while they're great to support the kids through the, the development, I think they also can hinder a player's development and also the players want for playing. Um, I think in my four years of refereeing, I've had more pe- problems with parents than I have in higher divisions. Uh, so I think the biggest issue is is there's an old school mentality still there where, you know, referees weren't respected. I think, you know, it's quite easy to sit there on the sidelines and say how you do things differently. And then the moment you get called out for that, and I'm, I'm more than happy to even say to the parents afterwards, actually do the law of the game, do the course, it's free, learn about the laws of the game. And you know what? Stick your hand and do a, do a club referee for a game or two. See how tough it is and how quick you have to make some of these decisions and then come back and talk to me. You know, because I think that's the issue is the moment that, People start learning how tough it is. I think that's a moment we actually start realizing that people are humans. Referees are going to make mistakes. Players make mistakes. Coaches make mistakes. You tell me one person who hasn't had a mistake, and I'm 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 not going to believe you. You know, it's a part of the game, and I think the more you can go with the flow rather than you know using that moment as a vendetta. Um, I, I think we'll be far better off in the sport as well. What do you think can and should be done to help protect referees in the future? I think it's a it's a bit of a two prong approach, right? So for me, it's about perception and, and building relationships, and a lot can be changed just by having a conversation. So next time you see a referee and they're comfortable to talk to you, talk to them ask them, you know, oh, I saw this on telly or this happened in my game last week or I don't understand. And that's how you start to build a rapport and a respect towards each other because respect is a two-way street. It's not just a referee walking out into the middle of the field and demanding it. It's about having that appreciation and understanding amongst, you know, both parties. Um, And I think um, from a governance perspective, I think member federations need to move towards um, stronger campaigns, um, stronger sanctioning for repeat offenders um, and actually supporting their referees who have gone through abuse episodes with, um, I know, Capital Football, we have a sports chaplaincy program. We've also got senior referees such as myself that are always available to support the younger guys that are going through um, incidents that we've obviously all experienced at some form of our career. And I think just enabling appropriate support networks to ensure that when these horrible things do happen, that we are supporting our people. It's not the easiest thing to tackle. Respect, the, the, the core values of respect and fair play, they're, they're not easy to tackle at a grassroots level, least of all at, you know, at the elite level. Um, it comes down to, I think, referees and associations having good working relationships so that things like silent round aren't just something that's about the clubs and about players, you know, and not saying negative things about players when they're playing or, you know, only giving encouraging um, encouraging comments and making encouraging comments. I think in some instances, those things probably need to be implemented for referees as well, where don't focus on the, you know, don't focus on the referee or a shush round doesn't just go for the clubs. It goes for actions towards referees as well. Stay quiet unless you can say something encouraging. Um, is it corny? Yes. Will many people get on board with it? No. Why? Because people need someone to hate. And as referees, we're, we're the clinically insane ones that have decided that our goal and our ambition is to put on a shirt that distinguishes us from the two other teams, make a third team of our own, go into the middle and say, well, we can be the person who'll copy your abuse. That's almost what we that's almost what we do every game. Um, and that's that's not to be, you know, self, you know, deprecating or anything. It's it's true. Sometimes that's what it feels like. It feels like you're just putting on a shirt that's basically got a target on its back and saying, right, give us the best you've got. 
what what can we do in the future? I think many associations are trying and they they come up with many creative ways. Um, and a lot of that is to do around development of referees and they focus more on just having as many um, assessors and instructors out there looking after their referees so that clubs and players and spectators actually then see an identified assessor or mentor or instructor and so they lay off the referee that's in the middle um, and perhaps you know direct comments and feedback towards that that more senior person outside of that if you if you happen to find someone who can answer that question any better than than that by all means i'm more than happy to listen to the answer Look, social media is going to be something that's going to be with us for, for life. Uh, unfortunately, you are going to get keyboard warriors who sit there behind their, their PCs and absolutely spit venom. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is a support network that helps to really sort of support each other. Um, you know, I think we've got some amazing referees out there. Uh, and some who are in the A-League who I watch get criticised every week on social media actually have some of the best games out there. Um, when it comes to a, a community-based level, again, as I said, I think the, the mentality needs to really be driven from a young age up, which is the referee is there as a third team. They are there to help provide the law of the game and flow of the game. And the main thing for me would be is show them the respect that you'd want, you know, treat them with the respect that you would expect on the field. And I think the game's going to be far better off from it. So I don't know, uh, younger referees, I'd probably suggest having uh, additional support in regards to mentorship and communication on a weekly base, see how they're tracking. But on the other hand as well, as, you, as you've stated before, referees are dropping off in jokes. So the less resources and the less availability we have, the less opportunity we have to properly make sure that these people are nurtured and developed in the right way. So it's a catch-22. You want the game to survive and continue, but yet, you know, these are the same people who will rip into volunteer club assistant referees for making an absolute brilliant call. So, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it on that one. And finally, for anyone who's watching this video and is thinking about possibly becoming a referee in the future, just what would you say to them? What sort of advice would you give them? Just do it, to be honest with you. Even if you never pick up a whistle, even if you just go into your course um, and you empower yourself with knowledge around laws of the game, there is a lot you'll learn. So a couple of, uh, about a month ago, I ran a course um, for a community club where we had most of their state league. So that's like a lower tier adult competition here in Canberra. Um, players from their team came along and I know for a fact, some of them won't probably ever referee and that's fine. But one of the players actually said to me, I learned so much more about football by sitting in your classroom for two and a half hours than I have my whole playing career. So I think it makes you appreciate the world game a lot better than you probably would have by just playing on a weekend. And I think things like the fitness, the friendships, the challenges, if you choose to pursue higher levels, like it's definitely something fulfilling. And I always have the running joke with a few of the players that you definitely get 90 minutes and you're not sat on a bench. So why would you not do it? <laughs> You'll never know what you're made of until you step out onto the park. You, you develop resilience. You develop, uh, you develop skills in being able to manage people and situations extremely high pressure, high pressure situations. Even to this day, I go into interviews whenever I, whenever I have a job interview. And I always say, you know, to that, to that wonderful question of, you know, this is a very high pressure environment. So how do you deal with pressure? Put me in the middle of 22 angry people. Give me a more high pressure situation. 
give me a, you know, there's a ridiculous statistic that apparently uh, Premier League referees make uh, in the realm of around 300, 350 decisions or something in a match. It's, I think probably a little bit higher. I might be conservative here with, with the number. But, you know, that's a ridiculous number of decisions that are being made instantaneously without people realising they're making those decisions. It, it teaches you a lot. It teaches you a lot about yourself. You, you definitely grow as a person. Um, you grow as a referee. You develop. And it is rewarding. It is a rewarding experience. Um, you know, I, I, I did last season, I, I refereed my second uh, Women's Premier League Grand Final. Uh, the second time in five in five seasons, um, and there was one side of a grandstand that was cheering for for the referee louder than the, what what they were cheering for either of the two teams that were contesting the grand final of of the women's Premier League competition. That that's. That's something that I've never seen before. I've never seen a referee getting cheated louder than either of the teams contesting a football match. So that that was pure magic. Stuff like that. Yes, it yes, it's grassroots football. Will you probably ever see it again? Who knows? But there there are some magical moments that football provides. And as a referee, once again, being in the center of that action, nothing can take that away from you. I've gone through some personal stuff in the last five to six years that uh, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy to the point where mentally and physically I have been that exhausted that I haven't been able to even fathom getting up in the morning to go to work. Getting up to referee, though, has been not only a dream, but it's the one chance I get to just stop thinking and just be able to experience the game as it is. I mean, I'm doing seven games this weekend. I've got one on Saturday, or sorry, one tomorrow, Friday night. I've got two on Saturday and then four on Sunday. And by the end of it, I'm going to be absolutely exhausted. But I, I'm never happier than being on that field. So not only does it give you an opportunity to still be a part of the game, you know, I know myself, I can't play anymore, even on an amateur level or anything along those lines um, due to, to previous injuries. But I still get to be a part of the game. I still get to be a part of the culture. I still get to be a part of the, the family that is football. Um, I've made some lifelong friends from it and, you know, not to mention you get to see some absolutely brilliant football up close. So what more could you want? At the end of the day, we need to remember that referees are human beings. They have feelings, they have emotions, and most of all, they can make mistakes. The amount referees get abused, particularly on social media, is absolutely disgusting at times. To get death threats for making a mistake is absolutely abhorrent. Thank you to the three referees for joining me answering my questions and sharing stories about being a referee, good or bad. And thank you to anyone who's watched the video up to this point.